One more time, I greet you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and I welcome you for this morning service and the anointing service, what we uh, call it every month end and I'm sure the Lord would deliver what He has kept in store for each and every one of us this morning. And with this, this morning, I don't take much time, but whatever little time, we spend on the power of the work of God in our life because we are living in the season of Christmas and one topic which we have already dealt uh, last week on the 20th saying how shall this be Mary asked King the angel of God how shall this be possible because I know not a man for that the answer from the angel you can see in Luke chapter 1, 34 and 35. Can somebody read if you have? Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Mm. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Amen. The Holy Ghost will come upon you. This morning, very briefly, I wanted to talk to you the power of the Holy Ghost, how it can, He can bring miracles into your life. The power of the Holy Ghost is nothing but the second, third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit of God. That's what we see in the, uh, uh, in the Bible. So, there is a question concerning the things that's going to happen in the life of Mary and Mary was so puzzled not because she doesn't trust God not because she doesn't know the value of God not because she doesn't have an idea who God is because Mary born in a Jewish very strict family because the Bible tells me Mary was engaged to a person who is from a Davidic covenant or the, or the lineage of David when you say the lineage of David they are very much aware of the prophecy concerning Jesus Amen Hallelujah so Mary is not an unbeliever Mary is not an ordinary woman who doesn't know anything about God because she's born and brought up in a Christian I mean, Jewish family with all the Jewish values and she knows the Pentateuch she knows the prophecies of Isaiah Jeremiah and uh, all the four major prophets she's a very well equipped woman for the purpose to live in heaven hallelujah glory be to God we're not talking to the people who doesn't have faith we don't talk to people who doesn't know who the value of God. We know the people who believe in the Lord, who has got faith in the Lord, who has got the promise in the Lord. For them we are telling this morning how you can receive a miracle this morning in Jesus' name. Can you hear one? Amen? amen. Hallelujah. There is a plan of God. There is a purpose of God. There is a future of God. And God brings you time through the power of the Holy Ghost. It's not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. Say the Lord. Amen. Amen. That is what the question of Mary. How shall it be possible? And the last week we have seen there are three steps. How shall it be possible? I just come to that lot a little later. But now I go quickly. Go into the message. The Holy Ghost will come upon you. People of God. You know what is this Holy Ghost? There are 369 times the name in a Greek used dynamis power. I want to briefly talk about this dynamis power and how this can translate and transform your life. Amen. Can I hear one? Amen? amen. Hallelujah. We have seen something about 369 times in different occasions it's been used and I go very quickly keeping the time in mind what is this genomic power translated to what we understand first you got to understand we are not talking about the power we are talking about the person of the Trinity his name is Holy Spirit of God it is not it it is he amen hallelujah he is not some force he is a manifestation of God himself and he is not a power he is a presence. He is not a power. He is a, he is a very holiness of God into your life. But he brings power. Amen. Hallelujah. He is not power. He brings power. He is power. Amen. Glory be to God. 
People of God, what is the Jonah's power translated in the Bible in 369 times is what you call ability. When I say ability, it is not the ability of the man that you think of it, it's the ability of God that can you can't even comprehend. Amen. Hallelujah. You understand that? And second one is it's a mightily, a mighty miracle, miracles, miraculous power, power, powers, strength, wealth. Amen. Hallelujah. There are so many areas this passage is been translated and what is this it refers to intrinsic power or inherent ability the power or the ability to carry out some function listen carefully because there's a bit of teaching required before you receive a miracle amen hallelujah the teaching will prepare you to receive the miracle of god amen this teaching will prepare you to receive what god is ordering for you what god is planned for you amen are you with me church yeah now what is this power it is an intrinsic power of inherent ability of god that can manifest through this power so that you can do something into your life amen glory be to god now the Jumina's power we are talking about, you can see that the Jumina's power in Greek, as I said, it's a power or a force. The root word of English for that is dynamic. From this only the came dynamite and all this. You know very well what is a dynamite, right? If dynamite explodes, how it will be? All peaceful at all? No, it will shatter everything. That is what in the original it is you so when the that's what they when the power of the holy ghost came upon the disciple it shattered them hallelujah not for worse for the best amen hallelujah glory be to god so this genuine power is something it's you know it's like a dynamite it's not only that it also brings authority there is a power and authority this is what i wanted to talk to you we are not just talking the power but we are talking the authority there's a lot of difference between the power and the authority i have the power but if i don't have the authority i cannot use the power am i right you take an office any office a prime minister's office its office is not sufficient office is not sufficient that's a power but the thing is, the power has to come with the authority. Amen? Police force is an office. But if you're in you the office, it doesn't have any sense unless they have the power to do something outside. Amen? Hallelujah? You're understanding the power. If you see that in this, the genius is a power and uh, uh, exosia is authority. These two words. Why I mention this is, these words are very highly used uh, in the New Testament, especially in the New Testament. So, this power of God, the dynamic power of God, will bring two things. One is a power, the other one is authority to execute the power. I mean, hallelujah, the authority to execute the power, all right? When this power comes into your life, it changes everything, amen, hallelujah. People of God, we see in the Bible, the power of the Holy Ghost. Okay, keep it. you understand what is a uh, uh, given as power, but understand there's a power of God, amen, hallelujah. Put it in a simple term. Power of God, it's the Holy Spirit of God, the anointing of God, the unction of God, the glory of God, the very essence of the power of God is the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to lift up the name of Jesus this place. I want to lift up the name of the Holy Ghost this place. I want to lift up the name of the Lord and Savior this place. That this place may descend his power and authority. What God is doing is he's grooming in this place so that he can bring a miracle in the name of Jesus. He's coming and empowering all this place. That's the reason we welcome the Holy Ghost. That the Holy Ghost may empower this place. Hallelujah. Because when the power touches you, when the power comes on you, when the power does something in your life, your life will be transformed. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. 
I know some characters in the Bible where the lives were completely transformed. People of God, as I said, the, the demonist power is the ability. The demonist power is something, you know, uh, gives uh, an extraordinary, uh, uh, you know, strength in you. It is a miraculous power. Anything and everything is possible with this power. It can come in the natural way. It can come above the natural way. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But when this power touches, when this power comes, when this power, you know, take control, things will change. Situations will change. Bondages will be broken. Every kind of hindrances will be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I know a person by name Jesus in the days of the Old Testament. When the ability of God came, he started translating the dreams. And from somewhere to nowhere, he's been exalted because the demonist power of God empowered his life. And his name is G. Uh, Joseph. We know very well. He becomes a, almost a prime minister of the state of Egypt and he controlled the whole thing. How it is possible? Because it's a plan and purpose of God concerning Joseph that the Human is power will empower his life. Amen. Hallelujah. I know another guy whose name is Moses. Oh, where is Moses? He's somewhere 40 years. He's in the desert. He's in the you know remote places of the earth and doing uh, you know shepherding. And there came the power of God upon him in an encounter on the day when he was met the Lord on the mount in the burning bush. There came the power and gave the ability to do mighty miracles of God. You know why I'm saying all this thing? Expect to receive a miracle this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. When this power touches you, when this power comes you, everything will be translated in your life. Everything will be changed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And you know, another person by name, Samson, the Bible tells me clearly, when the Spirit of God came upon him, Samson became a mighty warrior. There's, he can't see the difference between the lion or a bear or anything. There's a bronze gates or a walls or nothing can stop it because it is the unstoppable power of God which is called the divinous power and this power can change your life and can set the course of your life in right direction. It doesn't matter how your life is, doesn't matter where you are, doesn't matter how serious you are, how useful, useless you are, how Descent, whatever. I know one thing. My God can do a miracle. Amen. Hallelujah. Because I'm preaching a God who does a miracle in the name of Jesus. I'm preaching a God who can make everything out of nothing. I'm preaching a God who can bring everything into existence. That there's nothing around you. I'm preaching about a God who is above the nature. He's a creator. His name is Yahweh. Glory be to God. When he touches you, your life will never be the same again. Amen. Hallelujah. And I can go on tell that. Elijah, when the Spirit of God came upon, he ran ahead of the chariot. Elijah does miracles in the name of Jesus. People of God, apostles in the New Testament. Oh, when the demonist power of God came in Acts chapter 1 8, they had done mighty miracles in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And this is a power we are talking this morning. This is a power we want to exercise this morning. This is God who we, we, we want to worship and we want to adore Him because He is a God who can set us free in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. This is where you are with me for a while. Can you read Job 33:4? Listen carefully. Job 33 verse 4 tells me the Spirit of God has made me but the breath of the Almighty gives me life. Amen? Can you see the difference? When God made Adam I love that. He made a man. He kept everything. Every part was created, but there's no breath in him. The Lord said in Genesis chapter 2, if you read that, he breathed into his nostrils. The breath of God is the life of God. Amen. Can I hear one? Amen. We are going to see the breath of God this morning. See, something happened 
in the life of Adam, he was with the breath of God, he was with the life of God, he was with the anointing of God, he is in the glory of God, he is in the power of God, he is everything in the Lord and is equal with God and is moving with God, talking with God, fellowshiping with God. Everything is doing because the breath of God is in his life. But some reason, for some reason, he lost the breath. There is a body. Listen, this, this is what I, I want to be very careful with this verse. The Spirit of God is many, but there is no breath in it because of certain reason. I don't know where you are today. You have a body, but there is no healing in your body. You have a body, but there is no health in your body. You have a job, but there is no prospect in your job. You have a family, but there is no progress in the family. You have a job, but there is no proper things in the job. And you have a relationship. You have a relationship, marriage, but the marriage is not working. You are in a, have a business, your business is not working. You have something, but it's not working. Amen. Hallelujah. This is what the Lord asked me to speak to that. You have something in your life, but that's not working. Working. Something has happened to that, but God said, I rectify this morning. You know how I breathe my spirit into that problem. Amen. Hallelujah. People of God, the body is there, but the breath is not there. You have everything in your life. You must have money, but there's no peace in your life. You have a wonderful husband, but there's no progress in the life. You don't have children in your life. You don't have family built up in your life. You don't have a good relationship with your uh, spouse or husband or wife or anything. You have good ch you have children, but they're not good. There's something happening and the Lord said, it is there, but it's not no breath. I tell you, this morning, the Lord is speaking the breath into your life in Jesus' name. You have a body, but no health. You have a ministry, but no growth. You have children, but no prosperity and no progress in their life. It's, they have, but they're not useful. Glory be to God. This verse touched me a lot when I was preparing that. The Spirit of God, the Spirit of God has made me. But there's no breath. Because there's no breath. There's no life in me. Because there's no breath, there's no peace in me. Because there's no breath, there's no pro There was, but there's something happened. Something happened, but God says, I'll breathe into your problems. Amen. Hallelujah. Can I hear one amen, church? Amen. Can I hear one amen? amen? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. The breath I'm going to talk this morning, the breath I'm going to talk this morning is not the breath of the parents. When you're born, you know, when you're conceived, people of God, understand one thing. Your life starts with the conception. Amen? Your life starts with the conception. You know, the conception is the life, and that life is the breath of God. I don't know how much you received this this morning. You got to meditate on this. The breath of life starts when God breathes. Hallelujah. And with the breath what I'm talking is not breath of the parents. When I'm conceived in my mother's womb, yes, it is the breath of my mother. But that's not the breath I'm not talking, I, I, I'm talking today. And it's not, you know, somebody in a hospital, they have a ventilator that gives the breath. This is not the breath I'm talking, I'm not talking about that medical ventilator breath. I'm not talking about a mother's breath or the father's breath. I'm not talking about a breath. You can resuscitate people when they're going down, isn't it? I'm not talking that breath as well. And there's a nature we breathe. We, we can't survive without the breathing. Because whether I know it or not, knowingly or unknowingly, every time, every second, I breathe out and breathe in. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not talking that breath. Oh, glory to God. I'm talking a breath that comes from the very nostrils of God. I'm talking about the breath that comes from the very heart of God. I'm talking about the breath this morning that can change your life. I'm talking about the breath this morning that can empower everything in your life. I'm talking about a breath that, that can completely reshape your progress, your family, your situation, your circumstances because it's not the breath of the natural. It is the breath of the supernatural promise of God. And that breath is nothing but the anointing of God this morning. Can I hear one amen? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The breath of God. Jesus.
You know where this breath started? You know where this breath started? If it's Genesis chapter 1, what this breath can do? How this breath can execute? How this breath can impart? How this breath can empower? Hallelujah. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the earth. Genesis chapter 1 and 2. Let me tell you, the darkness was upon the face. There was a creation before, but some reason that creation was destroyed. But when the, even though the creation was destroyed, the breath of God did not leave the place. Amen. Can I hear one amen? Church. The destruction was there, but the breath not left them. Amen. Hallelujah. Maybe there's a problem in your family, but still the breath of God is allowed for you if you ask them to come in. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The breath of God will never leave you because you're born again. You're baptized. You want to grow in the Lord. You want to see the miracle power of God. You want to live for God. And the breath of God never left. But some reason, the breath is unable to work with you for you. And by this morning, the Lord says, I breathe into your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And this breath is called. You know what is this breath is called? Creation. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you all say creation? Creation. In your existing life, you need a new creation. Amen. Hallelujah. In your family life, you need a new creation. In your relationship, you need a creation. In your, you know, disappointed, distressed, and completely, you know, gone out of your way, you need a creation. Amen. Hallelujah. In your job, you need a creation. In your circumstances, you need a new creation. In your work spot, you need a new creation. In your family life, you need a new creation. In your children's life, you need a new creation. In your business, you need a creation. And in your ministry, you need a creation. Amen. Hallelujah. That's the reason the breath of God is hovering upon the face of the earth and the earth was in dark shape. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And it produced. What it produced? Miracle. What it produced? Can I hear the word? They confess to the Lord. Because the more you expect from the Lord, the more. You, it's not person. It is not something we have. Maybe God uses us, but it's you to receive it. Amen. Hallelujah. In your faith, you have to embrace it. In your faith, you have got to thank God. Lord, I thank you for the miracle that you're going to do. And thank you, Lord, for the breath that you're going to breathe upon me. And thank you, Lord, for the miracle that you sent for me today. I thank you, Lord, for the power that you're going to release on me. Lord, I'm ready to receive it. Amen. That's where you can see the power of God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. A miracle. You know what is a miracle? We all say miracle, miracle, miracle. For everything and anything we say miracle. It's good to praise God, but everything and all things are not miracles. A miracle is something which I want to define you. And this is what I believe the Lord has set this place for. Amen. Hallelujah. A miracle. You know what is a miracle? If a miracle is not ex explicable by natural or scientific laws all right everything on the face of the earth we are second uh, we are come under the power of law you got to understand the bible very clear if you don't understand the laws of the bible though you know everything you lose everything because god abide by the law as much as this universe is created by the law, with the laws, the same way the Bible, the spiritual life is created with the laws of God. And if you don't obey the laws of God, you may be a believer, you may be a baptized, you may be anointed, still you don't receive the blessing of God. When I say blessing of God, it's not just the money. When I say blessing of God, it's not just the cars and the bunglers. I'm not, uh, uh, when I say blessing of God, it's not just the job or the children. The blessing of God is something you can bring the plans and the purpose of God into your life and live a life that's worthy of the calling of God. That's what the blessing I talked about this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Even Hindus, even non-Christian world has got bigger money than you. Non-Christian world has got bigger houses than you. Non-Christian world have more money than you. Non-Christian world have everything and anything they have. But what's the difference between a non-Christian and a Christian? It is the power of God that lives in you and to live a life that's worthy of your calling. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That is what the breath of God will do into your life. 
A miracle is an explicable by natural or scientific laws and therefore it is considered to be the work of the divine agency. I mean, you get me what I'm saying? When you say miracle, it's only by the divine power. Not everything, is, okay, it's good to praise God for everything, but everything, some people, you say, oh, this is miracle. Miracle is not said in a natural way. It is. And another uh, translation tell me, God regularly works through the nature. Yes, God can work through the nature. Say, for example, if you are working in a company and God works through your boss to give you a promotion, that is nature. You get me what I'm saying? But what I'm talking is, whether he agrees or not, still God can give you a promotion. That's what I'm talking. Amen. Yeah, hallelujah. That's against your boss, against your law, against your company rule. Sometimes he say, I don't know how this has happened, but nobody expected that. Even my boss didn't like it. Even this person didn't like it. Somehow, the person came from above. He gave me the designation and went away. This is what I'm talking. Amen. Glory in your workplace, in your circumstance, in your family, in your situation, in your business, in your relationship, in your ministry, in everywhere. There should be a supernatural work of God in your life to demonstrate, yes, God is with me. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to you. What you see today, what you see today is not real. What you don't see today is more real because your future is not today. Your future is in tomorrow of the hands of the Lord. Amen. Can I hear one amen? Today you may not be, today you may be completely disappointed, you may be distressed, you may be humbled, you may be completely gone out of the way. Maybe you are sick, maybe you are you know, or don't have a job or a proper facilities or anything. Today will pass in 24 hours. Amen. Hallelujah. Today will never stay in your life. Only the thing comes is the tomorrow. Amen. But unfortunately, even we live 50, 60, 70 years, we live only in today. We never step into tomorrow. Hope you understand what I'm talking. Many of our lives, we continue only today. We never see God's tomorrow. But today, the Lord says, I have to step into tomorrow. Amen. Hallelujah. You get me what I'm saying? That means there's no progress in your lives because you continue to do what you are doing. Is a routine life can never take you into tomorrow. I mean, hallelujah. You may be having money, you may be having a job, you may be having a children, but you can never see what God wants you to see. Amen. Hallelujah. And the tomorrow is what God has planned for us. Amen. Let me go quickly. A miracle is an event, not ex. Uh, uh, explicable by natural or scientific laws. Theologians typically say that with the divine providence, God regularly works through the nature, and because He is God, He can work beyond nature. Did, did you get know what I'm saying? Miracle, God can provide you through your natural. And God can provide through supernatural where it's beyond your comprehension or understanding. And God can do against anything and everything because He's God. Amen. Hallelujah. Because He's God. He's a creator. He can do anything and everything. God called everything from nothing. Amen. Isn't it? And God can call the same thing into our life. Amen. I want to see few more minutes prepare you for this anointing Mary is expecting a miracle as I introduce Mary Mary is not an ordinary child or an ordinary girl she's a girl equipped with the knowledge of God you got to understand it Mary is faithful Mary is committed Mary is surrendered Mary does so many things because she's brought up in that Jewish faith and she expected a miracle and before she expected a miracle before she could pose the question to the angel how shall this be and when before the angel could give an answer she prepared herself with the three things to see the miracle of God amen hallelujah you know what what the three things she prepared Mary fear not this is the first thing the angel said. So Mary learned to leave her fears and come to the place of God. Amen. Hallelujah. The main reason we don't receive miracle because there's a fear in our lives in Jesus' name. We are compelled by the fear. What is fear? Everything and anything is fear. 
Amen? I don't know my job is there or not tomorrow. I don't know my car will, you know, I can pay my bills tomorrow or not. I don't know how my child would be tomorrow. I don't know my husband would be. I know how my wife would be. And everything is, is fear, fear, fear. When the fear is there, faith won't be there. Amen? Fear does not exist. I mean, faith does not exist when the fear is there. When fear comes, faith goes. When faith comes, fear goes. They can't exist together. You get me what I'm saying? That's what first step the angel prepared me. Mary, I know you are a virgin. I know you never knew a man. I know all your circumstances. You don't say, don't give me a reason. This is what it is. I know every reason that you can give me because I know your situation. I know it's hard. I know it's difficult. I know it's accusing. I know it's, uh, you know, trouble taking. I know you have to carry a lot of stress on you, pain on you, accusation on you, uh, rejection on you, you know, hatred on you. There's so many things around you. I know that. But in the midst of all that, fear not. Glory be to God. Am I? Am I reaching you? Fear not. Whatever your situation, fear not. God knows your situation. You, God knows better than you. You know God to work. And the second thing, angel told Mary, and Mary surrendered, limit not God. Amen. Hallelujah. If you want to listen to this message uh, uh, on 20th, you, you can hear that message on the Facebook or YouTube. Limit not God. Many a times we limit God because we have our own understanding. How, how this can be possible? No, 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 this is not there. This is not there. This should be like this. This should be like this. Then only things. That is your, your, your minimal understanding. What is your understanding between God? Because God said, my plans are not your plans. My purpose is not your purpose. My future is not your future. I mean, simple. Listen to it, God straight away. Lord, yes, your ways are different from my way. I come into your way instead of you coming to my way. Amen. Hallelujah. Many times we stand here when you ask God to come into our way. I don't want to waste time on that. It's not that way. You have to go in God's way. But we don't want to go God's way because God's way, let me tell you, it is not comfortable way. Amen. Hallelujah. It is a painful way at times. You have to pay a price. You got to pay a price. When you are in the comfort zone, remember you are not serving God. Many people think that I serve God the way I want, the, I, I, I serve God the way I sit, where I stand, where I go, where I do. No, 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 no. Comfortable zone, you can never serve God. That serving God is different. Amen. Hallelujah. Every believer has to serve God. I'm not talking about that. But really you want to serve God. God will take you out of your comfort zone. Abraham, can you come out? First thing, you want to serve God. Come out of your comfort zone. If you want to worship God, come out of it. When you, when you want to sit, when you want to please God, you have to have, you know, some people to displease. Amen. Hallelujah. You can't please God and people together. No, 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 never. If you want to please God, you have to step out. You may have accusation, you may have stress, you may have strain, everything. But in the midst of all the things, the angel of the Lord, Jesus tells you, fear not. Limit not. You can't limit God. Because of your small, little brain, you want to assess God. Amen. Hallelujah. This is what we do many times, isn't it? We assess God with our understanding. We think that we are scholars. We think that we are highly educated. We think that we know the world. We know all the things. People of God, we are all foolishness, I tell you. God says, my foolishness is better than your intellect. Amen. Hallelujah. That doesn't mean why God said God does not have foolishness. Even if he has foolishness, that foolishness is bigger than your intellect. Amen. That's what God means. He's not, he doesn't have foolishness. Bible never tells me that. People of God, limit not God this morning. Whatever your situation, wherever you are, however you are, whatever you are, limit not God and expect bigger things from the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Expect bigger things from the Lord. And God can do everything and anything for you. Amen. Hallelujah. And the third thing is, what she did is, Mary, allow God's way. Amen. I know. I know you're a good woman. I know. That's what God favored you. Blessed are the women. That's what she said. No, Blessed are you, Mary. She said, what kind of blessing is this? I'm going to have a baby without marriage? This is what you call me blessing? 
If God comes and tells me, no, 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 I expected my ministry to be in the midst of people in a great way. Hey, can I go to a small place? That's what the people think. Maybe they think that, hey, I have everything and I can do with this. Why you ask me to go there? No, 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 no. God's way are not your way. Remember that. I mean, if you're going in your way, you're not in a God's way. Let me tell you, whoever listens to this, if God's way you want to say, you have to surrender first thing. Mary tells me, let the will be done. Let the word be done. You have to surrender. You have to humble yourself for you to see the miracle of God. Amen. Hallelujah. People of God, only the Lord's way thing. Praise be to God's holy name. I just wanted to see Acts 1 8. This is the first time in the New Testament we see this power. And since then, the power is going everywhere, everywhere, even till this day. Amen. Hallelujah. Can I say one amen? amen. The power that started to thought. That doesn't mean that it is not there in the Old Testament. No, no, I'm not talking of that. I'm talking a different subject now. The diminished power that came upon the people of God. In the Old Testament day, the Bible says the Spirit of God came upon Samson. But the Bible never tells me the Spirit of God came upon all the people. Many people have doubts. Leave aside that. It's not the topic. No. You got to be, when the miracle, when the, see, Acts 1.8, if you see that, you receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. What I mean to say is, for today, you might need this power because you may not be witnessing to God. You got to understand this power is not just to receive miracle and go away. No, no, no. We are not talking only that. Yes, God will attend to your problem. God will attend to. But what we are talking about is something beyond that. Maybe your life may not be a life witnessing of Jesus, you know, because you don't have the diminished power. In other words, the power that can overcome. Amen. You know, when you witness, when you witness Jesus, when you don't have fear. Amen. Hallelujah. Isn't it? Oh, I don't know how people think that. I don't know how people say about me. I don't know what they talk about me if I talk about Jesus. Fear. Amen? But when that demoness power comes on you, you'll step out and say, I live for Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And you receive signs and wonders. When this power comes on you, you receive Miracles. Miracle is supernatural way. Amen. Hallelujah. You see in the life of disciples, from the time they started the journey with this demonist power, they started seeing the signs and wonders. I don't want to explain what is sign and wonder. This one, one word I can say that is beyond your understanding. Amen. Hallelujah. For today we keep it. It's beyond your understanding. You don't know how God turns the situation around. You don't know how God works, how God moves, how God changes. You cannot understand that. It's beyond and above everything. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And you will, you see your circumstances with you. This is what I'm going to pray now. This is what, if you want, if you are unable to witness for God, may the Spirit of God empower you from today onward, you will get the power to be witness for God. Amen. Hallelujah. Maybe you don't, you, you're expecting a miracle to come into your life, a, a, a sign and wonder to take place in your work spot and your family are in a circumstances, you're challenged. Yes, God is there to give that power into you. Amen. Hallelujah. The deliverance will come. And not only that, whatever the fear or the failure that's haunting you, people of God, I see everywhere there are two failures in the family, in, in the people of God. I'm talking not non-Christian. I'm talking Christians. You know what the two fears? One is a fear of, and I mean, one is a fear, and the other one is failure. Fear that they get failure. Anything, fear that they failure in this. Fear to do this. Fear to do that. But God says, no, my boldness. When you when you receive the Spirit, you receive boldness. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And not only that, and. God will make you excel in everything. Amen. Hallelujah. With one verse, I conclude. With one verse, I conclude this morning. 
and I'm going to pray for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Glory be to God. Just see this. Isaiah chapter 10, 27. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of that. And now can, I, can I hear the word? Because of? Anointing. What? Say that. Anointing. The problems will be sorted out because of? Anointing. The sickness will be healed because of? Anointing. My families will be set because of? Anointing. My children will be get ready because of? Anointing. My business will prosper because of? Anointing. And my job will be secured because of? Anointing. My family will be secured because of? Tell that. Confess that. Glory be to God. Only anointing can set us free. It breaks the yoke. I don't know what yoke you are living under. I don't know what yoke that is bothering you. I don't know what's the yoke that pulling you down. I don't know what's yoke that is so burdened. You know, have you ever seen people have yoke will walk straight? Isn't it? We see the oxen. They, when they have the yoke, their head will be always down. Amen? Their head will be always down because the yoke is on the shoulders. And this yoke is nothing but something that's so strong in your life, amen? That is binding you, that is troubling you, that's worrying you, that's eating up your health, that's eating up your wealth, that's eating up your job, that's eating up your peace, that's eating up your joy, that's eating up your ministry, that's eating up your anything you call it. You are bogged down by that yoke and today the Bible tells me, the Lord tells me the anointing of God will break the yoke in Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And we are going to pray for you. Glory be to God. Anointing of God is going to work. Anointing of God is going to be released and the anointing of God will set you free for the glory of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Not by power, not by might, but by might. Spirit share the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The anointing of God will flow in this place this morning. We're going to pray for everybody. Whatever the reason, my brother, my sister, those who are sitting here and those who are watching, the Spirit of God will set you free. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Spirit of God will set you free. Spirit of God will bring the deliverance into your life. The Spirit of God will give the peace into your life. Spirit of God will overtake everything and anything. What you're looking for this morning. And the Spirit of God will extend your territory. The Spirit of God will extend your family. The Spirit of God will extend your relationship. The Spirit of God will bring you peace, love, joy, compassion, everything. Because the fruit of the Spirit is all the stuff. What about the yoke today? Glory be to God. What about the yoke today? God is going to break it. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We bless you. We bless you this morning. Can we all stand up? Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Break me. Melt me. Mold me.